find this music so invigorating? <laughs> it really does. It's like a fresh shower. Makes you uh, just want to leap and seize the day. <laughs> seize really the day does. after Super Tuesday. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm Anne-Marie Green. And I'm Vladimir Dutia. So those Super Tuesday results are rolling in, as you could tell by our music. <laughs> yeah. Right? Makes you get the sense that things are rolling in. And Joe Biden has emerged as the new frontrunner in the 2020 Democratic race. The former vice president revived his campaign seemingly overnight by winning big across the country. Biden swept victories in the South, Midwest, and New England. He also managed to win big in the delegate-heavy state of Texas. However, California is leaning towards Senator Bernie Sanders, who also had major wins in Colorado, Utah, and Vermont. Biden now leads the delegate count overall, and Sanders is trailing, but not far behind. Ed O'Keefe is following the results from Washington. Joe Biden wakes up today in a far stronger position than anyone would have thought just a few days ago. But Senator Bernie Sanders is certainly not out of this race. The state with the biggest delegate hall tonight, California, is leaning towards him. But with Biden's substantial wins across the rest of the country, California may not provide the safety net that Sanders was looking for. So I'm here to report, we are very much alive! Super Tuesday jolted former Vice President Joe Biden's presidential campaign back to life as he swept victories from New England to the South and the Midwest. Those have been knocked down, counted out, left behind. This is your campaign! Biden even won in Texas, despite being outspent by Senator Bernie Sanders by millions. Given the spread of support, Sanders will still pick up many of the Lone Star State's delegates. You cannot beat Trump with the same old, same old kind of politics. Nearly half of the voters who made up their minds in the last few days voted for Biden. Signaling that his Saturday win in South Carolina and the endorsements from former rivals could have made the difference. What we need is a new politics that brings working class people into our political movement, which brings young people into our political movement, and which in November will create the highest voter turnout in American political history. But that increased turnout last night and actually came in states in that Biden won. For example, in Virginia, turnout jumped by more than 500,000 votes from the 2016 Democratic primary. The turnout's turned out for us! While Biden continued to lead among African Americans and voters 45 years and over, Sanders earned more support from Latinos and voters under the age of 45. We are putting together an unprecedented grassroots, multi-generational, multi-racial movement. The numbers didn't look good for Senator Elizabeth Warren, who finished third behind Biden and Sanders in her home state of Massachusetts. I'm in this race because I believe I will make the best president of the United States. Former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg skipped the early primaries to concentrate on the Super Tuesday states, spending more than 230 million of his own dollars on advertising there. But it didn't pay off. He came up short in states like North Carolina and Virginia, and only won the U.S. territory of American Samoa. In just three months, we've gone from 1% of the polls to being a contender for the Democratic nomination for president. As for what's next, Bloomberg is back in New York today, and his campaign manager said they will reassess going forward, but as of now, they're committed to staying in the race. Senator Elizabeth Warren is up in Boston reassessing with her team as well. Joe Biden is raising money in California, and Bernie Sanders is expected to spend the day in his home state of Vermont. Anne Marie and Vlad? All right, Ed, thank you. So for more on this, let us bring in CBSN political reporter Caitlin Huey Byrne. She's following the latest from Houston, Texas. So. How significant is this boost for Joe Biden? After the South Carolina win, people said, oh, it looks like things are pivoting. And then he gets these great endorsements and that's building on the momentum. But still, there was a lot of questions about whether or not what made him successful in South Carolina could then transfer to some of the states uh, that were voting during Super Tuesday. So can we talk about sort of how things are going for him? 
Hi, good morning from a very humid Houston. But <laughs> Texas was really, I think, the story that helps explain Biden's big wins last night. This was a monumental day for the Biden campaign and a surprise finish in a lot of these states. But here in Houston, I think it really helps to tell the story because in our exit polling, about 22 percent said uh, in Texas, voters said that they made up their minds kind of at the last minute in the last couple of, of days uh, as opposed to the early voting. And I think that's really where the swing in this race came. We talked to voters coming out of the polls yesterday who said that they had made up their minds while going into those polling places or while even standing in line at the polling places and determined that Joe Biden was their candidate because several others had dropped out and endorsed him. So I think the story of the night is really these late deciding voters who have really made headway in a lot of these races and a lot of these contests last night. Huge day for the Biden campaign campaign, outpacing uh, Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders in Massachusetts. I think that was a big uh, win for him because it helps him kind of claim this narrative. Uh, lots of people expected Bernie Sanders to do well in California, but the way in which Biden swept and the way in which he swept earlier in the night really gave him that narrative, that big headline and those delegates to uh, to push forward based on some of the coverage that we've seen some of these voters had what five six hours in line to make a decision yeah. at least in some some places in Texas yeah I want to ask you about that Caitlin because we saw I saw your tweet I yeah. saw your reporting uh, and the reporting of others who were in uh, Texas um, where you saw huge lines of people uh, waiting for hours and hours and hours and in fact I saw a tweet from a fellow yeah. uh, correspondent at another network who showed the last person who voted some seven hours after he turned up in line can you explain to our audience what's going on in Texas and in other states uh, that has made it so difficult for people to vote? Difficult for people to vote. Yes, exactly. Uh, we were at a polling location in Harris County in Houston yesterday uh, from 8 in the morning until about 10 at night. Uh, polls closed there at 7 p.m. local. People had waited in line for three plus hours after that. I think we even left before the last votes were uh, cast there. Uh, this is a real problem for Texas, for democracy, you can argue. We talked to voters coming out who said they waited three and a half hours and we're really frustrated by that process. They said their vote is worth it, but the idea of waiting that long to cast a ballot, I think, raises a lot of issues. Remember, voting rights uh, is at the center of this Democratic primary. You can bet this is an issue that people will be talking about moving forward. Yeah, you know, I talked to somebody uh, who lives in Texas who uh, went to vote yesterday, and they said one of the things that they've realized is how important voting rights are and that they know that there are some who are trying to disenfranchise them. And so they don't care. They're going to stand in line. They're going to go to wherever those polling places are to cast their ballots. Mm. Um, let me ask you another question about just the way Texas sort of, sh how it shook out. Mm, yeah, <laughs> I'll use the yeah. Right so listen, you know, mm -hmm. the thing about Bernie Sanders is it certainly seems like he had captured the Hispanic vote, but he did not win Texas. Mm -hmm. He looks like he mm. may be winning California, and part of the reason is because of the Latino Hispanic vote. What happened in Texas for Sanders? Right, he does do well among Latino voters. Uh, that's a key constituency here in Texas. But what was really interesting watching on the ground here was the way in which Biden really made a last minute push here in Texas, coming off that big win on, in South Carolina where he won every county was propelled by black voters who are a key constituency in these Super Tuesday states and actually especially here in Texas as well. He was really able to kind of capture this this last minute, uh, these last minute deciding voters. And I think that really matters in a race like this. Remember, he came straight to Houston to campaign. We interviewed him there and we saw that at a campaign rally later in the day, he was uh, much more energized. This was a crowd that was very enthusiastic about him. And then in Dallas that night, that's when he got the endorsements of Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar, and Beto O'Rourke, who did not have a su successful presidential run, but is still very popular here in Texas. So what was really key for the Biden campaign in the past 48 hours or so was that he was able to get these headlines, get this free earned media. And that's huge for someone like Biden, who doesn't have uh, as many resources as someone like Bernie Sanders is, who's able
able to tap into a, a reservoir of, of small dollar donors. This was a really critical uh, moment for Biden. And I think it's a it's a moment that we're going to be kind of looking back at for a really long time because I can't remember a time that this race changed so quickly in so little time. And, uh, you know, we're seeing establishment Democrats and moderates rally around the former vice president as their choice to take on President Trump uh, in the general election. Uh, Sanders supporters argue that the Democrats are making the same mistakes of 2016 when the party supported Hillary Clinton, who ultimately lost to President Trump, uh, although she did win the popular vote. Uh, given that Senator Sanders is potentially going to win in California, but that the former vice president did very, very well in the southern states, and even, Caitlin, as you pointed out, in states where he didn't even really spend any money or any time, including mm -hmm. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Warren's home state of Massachusetts, where for some reason Bernie Sanders did spend time and money, and in Minnesota, Amy Klobuchar's state. Um, what does that tell you about the dynamics going forward if we get to the, uh, as we get closer to the general election, where the mood of the population, the Democrats, are? You know, as we've been talking about for the past year and as we've been reporting on the ground in all of these states, the number one issue we are finding from voters is that they want a candidate to defeat Donald Trump. And I think yesterday and the day before, as they started to see this field narrowing down, as they started to see uh, these endorsements coming in from Biden and the support of South Carolina, I think really crystallized this moment for a lot of people. We've been talking too about, you know, it's really difficult to actually define electability. Voters don't even quite know what it means as they're assessing these candidates. But voters have also been overwhelmed by the sheer number of candidates. They've been overwhelmed by the decisions that they have to make. And so I think it really helps voters uh, when someone else kind of helps them make that decision. For example, we talked to a woman uh, yesterday coming out of the, of the polling um, location who said that she was watching the results in South Carolina and Biden's win there really helped her make that decision for him because she saw his ability to win and his ability to uh, have a key base of support in black voters. Uh, that, I think, is going to be really key heading forward. Um, we're starting to see Democrats really, uh, well, I should say traditional Democrats, start to coalesce around Biden to try to make this a two-person race. And we've been talking about these themes involved in determining what this party looks like going forward. And basically, I think the overall um, message that we got from voters last night who voted for Biden was that they just want to win in November. Uh, so that's kind of a, a key message looking forward. Uh, before you go, got to ask you about Mike Bloomberg. Uh, he didn't do so well yesterday. Uh, I think he only won American Samoa. He picked mm. up some delegates here and there. Uh, but, you know, he spent hundreds of millions of dollars. And his part of his argument for even throwing his hat into the ring is that he sort of felt like Joe Biden was, was, was floundering in the beginning of this mm -hmm. race. So then the question has to be, he didn't do so well. Joe Biden seems to be surging. Is there a possibility he may be dropping out soon? his campaign is, is having to reevaluate where they are right now. I, I don't even know what kind of calculation that is, how many, how much money he's spent per hmm. delegate. But uh, it is an, 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 kind of an insane amount of money. And this has also been a theme in this Democratic race that's kind of running against this kind of money in politics. It shows that it can't, um, can't get you uh, to where you want to go in, in politics, at least in this cycle. Uh, and I think you compare that to someone like Joe Biden, who, you know, in some states didn't even go to, didn't have an operation, didn't spend money. Uh, Biden, of course, has high name recognition, but it also seems shows that Biden does have a personal connection with Democratic voters. They feel like they know him. They saw him in the Obama administration. Uh, they've been familiar with him over the past decade at least, uh, and in some of these states uh, even longer than that. And so th there are a lot of Democrats who feel a, a personal connection with Biden and wanted him to be able to show that he could win. And I think that kind of uh, changes it. I also think it shows how critical these debates have been. Uh, for Michael Bloomberg, I think that was a real turning point in the, in the, in the process when he he made that first debate in Las Vegas, and you kind of were able to pull back the curtain and see uh, whether uh, what he was able to show matched up to the money that he was spending. And I think a lot of voters didn't see that connection. Uh, Caitlin, in answer to your question, our intrepid CBS News radio correspondent, Peter no. King. Okay. Peter King sent this email yesterday, and it says this, if the seven delegate number holds, and assuming that the $500 million ad expenditure is accurate, the cost per delegate was tonight by Mike Bloomberg 
Bloomberg, $71,428,571.41. And 40 cents. $71 million plus, Caitlin, per delegate. Well, I don't, I don't know a lot about finance, uh, not as much as you, Vlad, but I don't think that's a good return on investment. <laughs> I think that's safe to good say. Good point. You know enough to know that, Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very yeah. much. As always, we appreciate it.